you're in a sales slump right now, I can tell you with almost 100% certainty what is probably happening because I've seen this happen again and again and again. And I've seen this happen with people doing door to door sales, selling home security systems. I've seen it with people selling software. I've seen it with people selling uh, lead generation, SEO, you name it. And here's what always happens, okay? I'm gonna tell you what where I first saw this back in the day is when you first start into sales, okay? And you have somebody that gives you a good process and you have a good process that you can follow and you have a basic pitch and you have the scripts and the whole thing. What happens is you go out and you do that thing and you do it the, the very basic version of it. And it works because it's been tested, it's been tried and boom, it works. And you're like, awesome, I cannot believe that just worked. And then what happens is a couple, you know, sometimes it's a couple days, most of the time it's a couple weeks or a couple months later, you start, and this is the key, you start overcomplicating the process. You've been in sales meetings, you've been listening to the top reps or your manager or whatever, and you start to hear the things they're saying, you start to learn more about the product, and you start just putting too much into the pitch. So you might've had a four-step basic approach pro, uh, set or, or prospecting script, and now you're, you, without even knowing it, you're at seven, eight steps. You're talking about the product and how many leads are gonna get and SEO and this and ranking and blah, blah, blah. And guess, and you're dropping price and you're losing people because you're over complicating. So this happened to me my very first year doing door-to-door -door sales this is where I learned this and it scared the crap out of me. As I started doing door-to-door -door sales, they said, hey, here's the, here's the approach. Do this, say this, 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 and this, and then transition in the house and then go and do this, okay? And guess what? My very first day, I knocked doors and knocked doors and knocked doors and I sold my very first day. And I did it again the second day and I did it again the third day and I was like, this is easy, this is easy. And I did that 17 times, I got 17 deals. I almost never went an entire day. I think there was one day I went out and sold and didn't get a deal, okay? I was on fire. I took a break and I went out for the summer because how that worked is in the summer you could move to a new state and when you get to that new state then you start knocking doors for the entire summer so i went to arkansas in my very first day i went out and i'm not used to not getting deals my very my very first day i went out and i didn't get a deal i did not get a deal they call it i bageled and i was like okay that's uh, it's okay you did that once before you're okay day two same thing, I bagel, nothing, not a single deal. And now I'm freaking out when I moved across the country, my wife's pregnant and I'm like, dude, is this a fluke? Like you, and you start to doubt yourself. This is the other thing guys is when you've had success and then you don't have success, you start to doubt yourself, you start to doubt the process. Even though you've literally made money, you start to doubt the process, the product, everything that you're doing. Well, you know, and all the things that everybody said, you start to, to remember. And I started to remember all the people, hey, that was, that's a scam, you're not gonna get paid. And you start to doubt, and you start to wanna blame it on everybody else, okay? Day three comes, and I bagel the entire freaking day until the very end, and I'm not joking when I say this, my last door, it's, it's almost dark. I knock on this door, and I get inside, and I'm like, I am closing this deal. And I remember there was like a dispute, the wife wanted, the husband didn't, and I'm like, dude, we gotta go talk. We went in the garage, and I know I didn't do anything right on the sales side, but I was like, look, bro, your wife wants this. And I just pleaded my heart out, not, not in, a, in a desperate way, but I was like, look, bro, I gave him the best pitch of my life. And I know I did everything wrong, but I needed that deal. And I, it was not a good deal, by the way. I had to give too much equipment. I had to do all these things. It was wrong, but I got the deal and I broke that slump. And what I learned, because this happened to me a couple other times throughout that summer, and then it's happened every time I would, I would recruit someone, I learned that what happens is you have a basic pitch, you know it works, you go and do it, and you have success. And then you get too cute, you get too smart. They start asking for price, and you start giving price. Or they start asking about deal structure, and you start giving deal structure when that's not the right time to do it, and you still start overcomplicating the process. And all of a sudden, people's confusion, instead of them telling you, hey, I'm confused, can you re-explain that? It comes out as, hey, we're good. Hey, we're not interested. And so what, what we had to do, what I had to do with myself, what I had to do with my reps, and what I've had to do with my salespeople right now is you have to go and you have to listen. Okay, what, what am I saying? Okay, uh, uh, he's teaching me to do this. This is what the sales script says. Why, why am I talking about SEO? They don't care about SEO. They don't care about rankings, guys. They care about the leads. So quit talking about it. Quit talking about the rankings and the SERPs and the this and the that and talk about what they care about and the things that actually worked. And so this actually happened to my setter too, really quick, happened to my setter. I hired a setter um, last summer, okay? This girl had no experience. She was like a secretary for someone else. Came in, I, I did a 44 minute Zoom call 
And I said, here's the pitch. Here's what you're going to do. Here's your list of customers. Here's basically what we're saying, but she had no idea. Go say that and get people to be, you go set them for me and I'll call them. Okay. First week, eight to 10 appointments. Boom. Next week, something similar. Week after that, three. The week after that, two. She's like, Nick, I don't know what's going on. We're talking to the wrong people, the wrong niches. And I'm like, no, no, no. Let me listen to your pitch. So start recording yourself. Started recording herself. And what was happening is the business owners were, would ask the same questions they did at the beginning. They'd say, hey, so like, how does this work? What's the price? Blah, blah, blah. And in the beginning, she said, you know, that's not really what I handle. I'm just like calling to reach out because I can have Nick handle it. And that was what she said in the beginning because I taught her to say that. Guess what she started doing when she wasn't getting people set? She started trying to answer it. Well, it's this deal structure and it's flat fee and blah, blah, blah. And she scared them off. And they started getting confused. They started getting this buying pressure. And so I said, hey, listen. And I started listening to the calls. I'm like, go back to the basics. Let's look at that four-step pitch I gave you. Go back to that. And guess what happened? She popped right back up and she started crushing it, okay? I see this happen every single time. Even in my program, I have people come in. They follow the process. They get their first deal three weeks later. Took them three years in another program. They come into mine three weeks. Boom, get a deal, okay? Maybe another one. Maybe another one. Maybe they get three deals. Two months later... They hit me up and say, Nick, I'm just in a slump. I'm just this, I'm that. Okay, let me listen to your pitch. Let me listen to what you're saying. Let me listen to the Zoom close. What do you, like, walk me through it. And every single time, it's because you're overcomplicating the process. So here's my advice. If you have a process, if you don't have a process that works, you need to figure that out, okay, number one. But uh, number two is if you have a process that worked at one point, okay, and now it's not, it ain't you, it is not the product, it's none of that. You're overcomplicating this. Go back to what worked and when it worked. And this is why it is one of the reasons I need to create a video on this because it's so important. I record every single thing that I do. I record all my calls, my prospecting calls, my interactions with my clients, my interactions with my employees because I don't want to miss these points, okay? So I would encourage you to do that. Go back to the time when you were having success and what were you saying then? But probably more importantly, what were you not saying when you were having success? So if you're wondering, hey, I'm in a slump, why? It's because you're overcomplicating the process.